You're at your favorite Chinese restaurant. The orange chicken arrives, glistening and perfect. You take a bite and it's incredible. Savory. Rich. That flavor you can't quite name but keeps you coming back. Then someone at the table says it. I bet this place uses MSG. Isn't that stuff bad for you? But here's something that might surprise you. MSG, the ingredient that got a bad reputation and led Chinese restaurants to put up no MSG signs? It's in your Doritos, your ranch dressing, your KFC, your Pringles. And the controversy around MSG? It didn't start with science. It started with a single letter to a medical journal in 1968. So, what is MSG really? How is it made? And why did this ingredient become so controversial? Let's explore the process. MSG stands for monosodium glutamate. It's a white crystalline powder that looks like salt. And it does one thing exceptionally well. It amplifies the savory, meaty flavor that the Japanese call umami. Umami is the fifth taste alongside sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. It's that richness you get from aged cheese, ripe tomatoes, mushrooms, and a perfectly cooked steak. MSG delivers pure umami in concentrated form. But here's the thing. MSG isn't some modern laboratory creation. The story starts in Japan, 1908. A chemist named Kikunai Ikeda was eating a bowl of dashi, a traditional soup made from kombu seaweed. He noticed the broth had this incredible savory depth. Ikeda became obsessed. What was creating that flavor? He took the kombu back to his lab. After months of experiments, he isolated glutamic acid. When he combined it with sodium, he created monosodium glutamate. He tasted it. There it was. That exact savory flavor concentrated into a white powder. In 1909, Ikeda founded Ajinomoto, which literally means essence of taste. They started producing MSG commercially from kombu seaweed. It became wildly popular in Japan. Then it spread to China, Korea, Southeast Asia. By the 1930s, MSG was a staple seasoning across East Asia. So how is MSG actually made today? Originally, it came from seaweed. Producers would extract glutamic acid from kombu through boiling and crystallization. But seaweed harvesting couldn't keep up with demand. In the 1960s, Japanese scientists discovered a better method. Fermentation. It starts with sugar, usually from sugar beets, sugar cane, or corn. This sugar is dissolved in water to create a nutrient-rich broth. Then they introduce bacteria, specifically Carina bacterium, the same types of bacteria used to ferment other foods. The bacteria eat the sugar. As they metabolize it, they produce glutamic acid as a byproduct, like how yeast eats sugar and produces alcohol, or how bacteria turn milk into yogurt. The fermentation takes 24 to 48 hours in stainless steel tanks at 86 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The bacteria multiply, the glutamic acid accumulates. Once fermentation is complete, the bacteria are filtered out. What's left is a liquid rich in glutamic acid. Then comes neutralization. They add sodium hydroxide. The sodium bonds with the glutamic acid, creating monosodium glutamate dissolved in water. This liquid is evaporated. As it concentrates, MSG crystals form. These crystals are harvested, dried, and milled into that fine white powder. The final product is 99% pure MSG. The entire process takes about three days. Now, here's the kicker. MSG made through fermentation is chemically identical to the glutamate in tomatoes, cheese, and mushrooms. Your body can't tell the difference. So, if MSG is just concentrated umami from fermentation, why did it get such a bad reputation? The answer takes us back to 1968. A doctor named Robert Ho Man Kwok wrote a letter to the New England Journal of Medicine. 
He described experiencing numbness and weakness after eating at Chinese restaurants. He speculated it might be the MSG. The journal published it. Not as a study, just a letter. The media ran with it. Chinese restaurant syndrome became a thing. News outlets warned about MSG dangers. Restaurants put no MSG signs in their windows just to stay in business. Here's what nobody mentioned. Kwok's letter was anecdotal. No controlled study, no evidence, just one person's experience and a guess. Scientists immediately started testing MSG. Study after study, decade after decade. The FDA commissioned reviews. International health organizations investigated. The conclusion? In normal amounts, MSG appears to be safe. The FDA classifies it as GRAS, generally recognized as safe. Same category as salt and sugar. Some people report sensitivity, but in controlled double-blind studies, where people don't know if they're eating MSG or a placebo, these reactions typically don't appear at normal levels. But wait, while Chinese restaurants were pressured to remove MSG, American food companies were quietly adding it everywhere. Doritos, Campbell's Soups, KFC, Hidden Valley Ranch, Pringles, they just didn't call it MSG. They used terms like autolyzed yeast extract or hydrolyzed vegetable protein. All contain free glutamate, the same compound that makes MSG work. Today, MSG consumption is higher than ever. Asia uses about 1.5 million tons per year. Million. Tons. In Vietnam, it's called Bot Nyat. In Thailand, Pong Churot. In the Philippines, Vets In. Grandmas keep it next to the salt. And Western chefs are bringing it back. David Chang has been outspoken about MSG's unfair reputation. He uses it openly. Other chefs have followed. Because MSG makes food taste better. It enhances existing flavors. A tiny pinch can make a soup richer, a stir-fry more complex. The recommended amount? Half a teaspoon per pound of food. That's it. So, let's go back to that Chinese restaurant. You're sitting there with your orange chicken. Someone mentions MSG. But now you know MSG is made from fermented sugar, like yogurt from fermented milk. You know the concern started with one anecdotal letter in 1968 not scientific research. You know, while Chinese restaurants advertised no MSG, American packaged foods used it under different names. You know glutamate occurs naturally in foods humans have eaten for thousands of years. The next time someone expresses concern about MSG, you'll understand the difference between anecdotal reports and controlled research. You'll recognize how cultural assumptions shaped perceptions of what's safe and what's foreign. That's the process. We reveal how things actually work, one story at a time. If there's something you'd like us to explore next, let us know. Until then, trust the process.